Okay, we're gonna talk about action potential, excitation, contraction, coupling, and muscle tension. Why, I didn't know, well, I know why, I just don't know what else to call this video. So I'm gonna answer the question, what does the graph look like for all these three things together? That's what it looks like. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist and evidently not good at making up video names. Uh, just to make sure that when we take a look at this graph, we're talking about a contractile heart muscle cell. That's what we're looking at. And this figure shows the temporal relationship between the cardiac action potential, the calcium transient, and contraction. When looking at this, the x-axis is time in milliseconds, and the y-axis is an increase in uh, membrane potential, calcium concentration, or tension. Okay? So... INA is the sodium current. It's that upstroke here. It's that thing right there, if we remember. Then the, the increase of intracellular calcium, there's two different methods that this occurs. The increase of intracellular calcium due to the calcium current, that thing, that's the calcium influx via the L-type calcium channels, that doohickey right there. This rise of intracellular calcium by itself is too small to trigger a contraction. It's the calcium-induced part of the calcium-induced calcium release. The next way that we increase intracellular calcium is the calcium transient, that much, much bigger one. This is the concentration of calcium in the cytoplasm released by the sarcoplasmic reticulum. From there, going through these open ryanodine receptors into the cytoplasm. This is the calcium that the myofilaments see, what myosin and actin see. This is the calcium release. So calcium induced, this is the calcium release part. Then tension. So as the calcium goes in, the tension goes up and then circuit brings it back down. So the action potential propagates down the T-tubule and opens up the L-type calcium channel. Bam, there's that upstroke. And during the upstroke at negative 40 millivolts, the L-type calcium channel slowly opens. And when it opens, calcium flows into the cell and opens the ryanodine receptors flows into the cell. That's the calcium that binds to ryanodine. When the ryanodine is open, the sarcoplasmic reticulum releases loads of calcium into the cytoplasm. Bam! There's that calcium transient. The rise in cytoplasmic calcium activates the contractile prote proteins, myosin and actin, and we get systole, the increase of tension of the muscle. But then the cytoplasmic calcium must decline for the cell to relax, and that's what circa does. Pew! and the calcium intracellular cytoplasmic calcium goes down and thus the tension of the muscle goes down. So this is a very sequential process. Voltage-gated sodium channels open, the sodium current causes the L-type calcium channels to open, you get the calcium current, that binds to the ryanodine receptors and you get the calcium transient from the SR, you increase muscle tension but then circa reduces cytoplasmic calcium and the muscle tension goes down. First, the voltage-gated sodium channel through the sodium current causes the calcium current, causes the calcium transient, causes an increase in muscle tension, and then circa brings down the cytoplasmic calcium and the muscle tension goes down. Rapid communication between electrical events occurring in the sarcolemma and calcium release from the SR that leads to contraction. And that, my friends, is action potential, excitation, contraction, coupling, and tension in a nutshell.